Hi, this is Bijan from Pop Rocks Radio, and welcome to another Pop Rocks Short. If you enjoy these videos and want to see more, please hit the like button and subscribe below. All right, on with the show. You know that feeling when you listen to a great album and think, why wasn't this band bigger? Especially with power pop, that can be said of her many bands. Bands like Badfinger, Shoes, and 2020. But if any band truly deserves that should have been bigger tag, it's Big Star. Despite barely selling any records during their time together, their first three albums are on Rolling Stone's list of the 500 best albums of all time, and they've been a massive influence on bands like The Bangles, The Posies, and R.E.M. Big Star began in Memphis in the early 70s as the brainchild of Chris Bell, the son of a local businessman. After playing in different bands throughout the 60s, Bell formed the bands Icewater and Rock City with a revolving set of musicians that finally settled with friends Andy Hummel and Jody Stevens. They all had taken recording classes from John Fry, the owner of Arden Studios in Memphis, who had generously let them use the studio at night. Ladies and gentlemen, meet Alex Chilton. Fresh off his success as the lead singer for the Box Tops, Alex Chilton returned home to Memphis where he recorded enough material for an excellent solo album, but was unable to ignite much interest at the time. Alex and Chris had known each other from around Memphis, and Chris asked Alex to join his band, wanting to write songs together like Lennon and McCartney. Now a foursome, they were united by their love of the Beatles and the British Invasion, which ultimately shaped their sound. They took the name after a local grocery chain, Big Star, and set to record what would soon become number one record. Much has been said about the band having cursed themselves by calling their debut number one record, but maybe they just knew they were that good. Upon release, the reviews were great. The fact is, no one sounded like them in 1972. Stations played their album and people loved it, but couldn't find it in the stores. Arden had become a Stax distributed label in the early 70s, but Stax proved unable to promote or distribute the record with any success. So lyrics like these, at least for a time, were just lost. Would you be an outlaw for my love? The failure to set the world on fire was particularly hard on Chris, who had put his entire soul into number one record. Soon after starting work on their second album, Chris left the band in a spiral of depression, conflict, and drug abuse. After disbanding for a while, the remaining members regrouped and finished recording the album Radio City as a trio. With Chris's departure, some of the polish from number one record was gone, but the songwriting still shimmers. Upon release in 1974, hopes were high after glowing critical reception and singles like the glorious September Girls. But just as with number one record, poor distribution took the album nowhere. Shortly before the release, Andy left to go back to school and live a more normal life, and was replaced for a time by John Lightman before the band again disbanded. Some have called it the testament of a bitter man trying to sabotage his own career. Others have called it a document of Alex's descent into drugs and alcohol. Still others have called Big Star's third one of the greatest albums about heartbreak ever recorded. Jody and Alex recorded it throughout 1974, but it wasn't released until 1978. The reviews declared it a harrowing masterpiece, but commercial success still eluded them. Along with playing in local bands around Memphis, Chris Bell recorded some amazing solo material and spent time shopping it around the US and Europe. Chris was killed in a car accident in 1978. Though Alex's talent and history led many to believe he was largely responsible for the big star sound, Chris's posthumous album I Am The Cosmos shows how much of it was pure Chris Bell. Alex ventured into indie, lo-fi, and punk music, worked as a solo artist and with bands like Panther Burns, as well as producing bands like The Cramps, until finally he and Jody regrouped Big Star in 1993. Joined by John Auer and Ken Stringfellow of the Posies, the new Big Star recorded and played shows together for the rest of Alex's life.
Big Star was a band ahead of its time, but thankfully maybe the world has finally caught up. I think musician Robin Hitchcock said it best when he said Big Star's music is like a letter that was posted in 1971 that arrived in 1985. Like something that just got lost in the mail. This is Bijan from Pop Rocks Radio. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Yeah.